Good evening. I'm Suzanne Reynolds Acapella, and I'm a performing arts senior from Sanford, Florida. Today, it is my great privilege to honor Javicia Leslie with our 2021 Rising Star Award. And few rises to the top have included parts of such magnitude and embodiments of gravitas. She was the Almighty's unlikely pen pal and God friended me, and now she's become the latest savior for the land of overworked superheroes, Gotham City. Leslie's character, Ryan Wilder, is an unlikely inheritor of powers she never imagined. Her Batwoman is accepting of her flaws, self-aware, and acutely in touch. In the modern pantheon of superheroes, it's difficult to imagine new heights to reach and new victories to be won. But as Ryan Wilder, Leslie does just that. She's the caped crusader we've been waiting for on television, an image that inspires and a heroine whose words and deeds shatter barriers of representation. Devicia Leslie's personal superpower, authenticity. Let's take a look. The suit has GPS, so you might as well just give it back now, Miss. Wilder, Ryan, and I'm not done with it yet. I've been trapped in a life surrounded by criminals. I know how they think, how they act, but most of all, I know how to stop them. Time to be powerful. Ooh, whoa. New Batwoman. Gentlemen, Rising Star Award honoree Javicia Leslie. Congratulations. Thank you, Suzanne. Thank you so much, SCAD TV. <laughs> um, this is really, really dope. I I I would say um it to get it at this point in the season just really it it actually shows more towards our writers and my cast members and our crew because we to be able to put together um such an authentic story in a world that is so imaginative is really powerful. So I want to say thank you on behalf of all of us, um, because I feel like this is like our show is getting the rising award award, the rising star award. Um, so yeah, I appreciate it. Thank you so much. That's my dog. That was really fun. <laughs> awesome. Um, Hello, and welcome to SCAD ATV Fest. Um, thank you for joining us today. I'm Entertainment Weekly writer, Chancellor Agard. Um, first off, congratulations to JVC Leslie on your award. Um, Well-deserved. And today, I'm happy to welcome not only Javicia, but the rest of the Bat family from from the, from the, from the, from the CW's Batwoman. We have Cameron Johnson, who plays Luke Fox, Megan Tandy, who plays Sophie Moore, Nicole Kang, who plays Mary Hamilton, Rachel Scarston, who plays Alice, and also showrunner and executive producer Caroline Dries. Um, so without further ado, I guess let's get started with this panel. Um, how are you guys all doing today? Fantastic. Good. good. Bless, blessed and highly flavored. Amen. Woo! Um, Same. <laughs> you guys are in the middle of production on season two at a very sort of weird time. I mean, I'm curious, what has it been like for all of you to sort of shoot this season in the sort of COVID pandemic bubble, um, safety bubble, up, um, um, sorry, up in Vancouver? I feel really grateful. I think that, you know, obviously talking to my friends back in LA, the industry, it's a really difficult time for everyone. So for us to still be able to work and do what we love um, in the capacity of a superhero show where it's really active um, and imaginative, I feel super, super like grateful. And then we're so close, like our cast and our crew, we're so protective of each other. We met, we're all making sure that we follow whatever protocols are necessary so that we can continue to work while everyone also is able to go home safely to their family. So it's just, it's an honor to be able to create right now. Yeah, and to Javicia's point and your point, Chance, uh, we do have, we're very lucky to have the CW Vancouver bubble. 
So not only do we have our bat family, we have so much fun on our sets and outside of it, but we also have friends and all the other Arrowverse shows and all the other CW shows. And we're all getting tested and safe. So we have like this big community that's all very blessed and very lucky to be working right now. And thankfully with all how hard it is on mental health right now with all this COVID stuff that's around us, we thankfully have a community that we can sort of uh, call to and rely on in the dark days. And I know like, just to go off of that, like I know, it can be nerve wracking to think, oh my God, I'm gonna get something stuck up my nose every other day or or what is that gonna be like? And and is that gonna be a, you know, like tough or what have you? But like anything, I feel like a lot of the protocols have become just sort of second nature at this point. So it's just like what you gotta do, like you brush your teeth in the morning, you get tested in the afternoon and I just, and you go to work. So I think everyone's been just such troopers and really, really just agreed to the to the term. So we made it work and uh, we're making the best of it. Um, I miss I, I know we have a lot. That's been a, a bit lot. more challenging this year. <laughs> Sorry, I feel like um, I'm not getting the feed at the right time. <laughs> so I just don't <laughs> like mental, like I can't. That's great. <laughs> Um, I was going to say, I know we have a lot of students uh, watching this from SCAD, and so I wanted to uh, first start off um, with you guys. I wanted to go around for the cast and sort of you sort of talk about sort of what you remember from your audition experience for the show. Um, and I guess I want to start with Javicia because I know you, the most recent person to audition for it um, during the pandemic via Zoom. What was that like? And we can sort of move on to the rest of the cast. Yeah, I feel like my audition was probably way different than everyone else's. Um, <laughs> Well, it started with self-taping. So we had to do a self-tape first, and then um, we went into the Zoom audition. And it was it, it was it was nerve wracking because, you know, you don't really, you can't feel the energy in the room, you, which could be a good thing, you know, you never know, because you don't know if they like you or not. Um, you don't feel the energy in the room, it's really just you and a reader, um, and you trying to hear what they're saying on the other end when they do say something. Um, but it was fun. The two scenes that we picked, um, one of them we actually have not used. I don't know if it'll ever be used. It was kind of like the scene where Mary and Luke uh, find Ryan in the alley. But the other scene that we did use is the scene where I'm on the rooftop and Mary's like, like, can't, you know, teaching me how to like look like a superhero. So like what you saw in the actual scene is very similar to what I did in the audition, all the way to tripping and everything. So it, it was kind of pretty like spot on for what we ended up shooting. <laughs> I love the audition story because um, Nicole is very much part of my audition story. So I try to keep it as short as I can. But I, my original audition was for Warner Brothers in New York City. And they were going to give a callback, but they just skipped straight to the screen test. And for the actors out there, a screen test is basically a callback, but in front of a lot of very important people, <laughs> all in one room. So uh, they flew me to L.A. And uh, I ran into Nicole and I knew Nicole from a table reading a year or two before. We had the same agent at the time. So the next day we went to the Warner Brothers lot and we had the screen test. But first there was a rehearsal. And in that rehearsal, our showrunner Caroline Dries was there. Our producer Shara Schechter was there. And our casting director David Rappaport was there. And we sort of went through this scene all together, working it out so that they kind of got us comfortable before we got into the room with all the suits. And what was really nice is that it was me and three other people up for Luke, Nicole, and I think two other people up for Mary, and there were three people up for Sophie. And me and Nicole the whole time were just cracking jokes. So like, it just felt like fun. It didn't really feel like we were auditioning because the whole time we're like, oh, oh we're auditioning now. So I got, we just like kind of went into the room, did our thing in front of 10 people. And that was with Warner Brothers. And then the next day was CW, which was 17 people in front of more like a black box theater almost. And the whole thing was only four pages for me. It was a two page comedy scene and a two page drama scene. And then me and Nicole ended up booking it together. And then once we flew back to New York and we landed in New York, the news was on deadline and it was everywhere that we both booked the part. So we stayed at the airport for like 30 minutes, <laughs> like partially crying and texting all our friends. Wait. Like, I know. I Waiting for people to recognize yeah. you. <laughs> 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 
It's me. It's me. Right here. <laughs> I yeah. I mean, Cameron just sort of told that story really, really beautifully. I I sort of second that. I was there. I also remember seeing Megan Tandy and being like, "Wow, she's giving me so much like Carrie Washington regal energy. She was just so beautiful." <laughs> And I was like, oh my gosh, that was definitely so sick. But I know the soapy sets were like more dramatic, so I definitely think that they were like on a different energy. But yeah, me and Kim was very professional, we're very professional. Um, uh, yeah, it was really nice to go through the audition process with a friend, I will say. Um, and it, our chemistry definitely like helped. And we, it's just like a joy to bring that also in to Mary and Luke and every day. And it's just, it makes things a lot easier. Uh, but I will say that memory of us flying down into New York City, I had never flown into New York City before. So I was like so taken by the very like Frank Sinatra, like New York, New York sort of feeling. It's you know all lit up, like there's water around, it was like glistening. And as we were coming down, our phones were blowing up and it's sort of that like, societal code where you're quiet on the plane and um i think i was quiet i'm never quiet i but i <laughs> was freaking out and it was just that thing that we're like silently looking at each other because we like sat next to each other like screaming oh my god it's happening it's happening and as we were coming down just like being able to land in new york i think that's a memory i'll like keep forever thank god the woman in the row next to us was like excited for us and <laughs> <laughs> I know. I never forget when you look at your phone, you turn your phone on, you went, Why did my friend just tell me congrats? And I was like, I turned my phone on. We were like, How does everyone know? <laughs> I love that story. <laughs> and uh, Megan and Rachel, what about you guys? Yeah, I, uh, I remember second guessing myself when I first walked into. Uh, David Rappaport's like waiting area, who's the the head of casting um, for these wonderful superhero shows, because there was just so many girls there, and I, I remember calling my mom like, "Oh my gosh, like they're all dressed completely the opposite of me. Like I've completely like misunderstood this character." And and my mom was like, "No, you wear what you've got on." And I was like, "All right." And I remember <laughs> going in, and Caroline was there, and Sarah Schechter, David, of course. And I got to say, obviously, you never know if you're going to get it or not. But I actually felt like I, I really felt like I was soapy. I remember like I remember going through my first scene and I was like, you know, what? this actually like feels right. I was like, this is it. Um, so I remember freaking out and being excited. And then I remember getting the call to go to the, the next phase of it. And then I do remember Cam and Nicole being so chatty, laughy, laughy. But I was trying to like stay in the zone. I was like, look, y'all, I'm trying to get this role. So I remember being a little, little bit away from them. I was like, they're talking too much, they're talking too much. Um, but um, but yeah, no, I just, I, I actually remember, um, and I say it very humbly, I, I just remember really feeling like, I was like, cool. Like I was just in there freaking out moments ago. Look at all these other girls. But once I stepped into the room and I, I could feel Caroline and Sarah's energies. I actually sincerely felt like I felt like Sophie. So I was like, if this doesn't work out, at least I know that I did a good job. So yeah, it was it was a good experience overall. Um, I I had basically given up on acting. I think when this edition came uh, my way, I'd been living in LA for a really long time, and I'd been working, and then I went through a period where I didn't really work, and I I thought what am I doing? I, I have a degree. I, I, I need to, I need to do something else. And so I just moved back to Canada, to Toronto, where I'm from. And I remember it was maybe two weeks after I had moved back and I, and I moved all my stuff, everything that I get this edition. And so truthfully, my initial tape there, you know, I mean, I, I always like to do my best job with anything, but I didn't think it was going anywhere. <laughs> so I just kind of, did the edition. I remember an actor friend of mine just happened to be coming over that day. And I said, Hey, can you just help me with this? And I think we did it twice. And he picked which one he liked the best. And we sent that off. And I think it was that night I got a call from my agent saying they pinned you for this part. And I was kind of surprised. Um, and then that started the process uh, of me going down to LA, meeting with Caroline and Sarah, we worked it a bunch of times. Um, and then I went through the whole studio and the network process. But unlike 
um, Megan, there was no, there's no point in this process where I was like, this part's for me. Like I, I, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, whatever, we'll see, you know? And I, I, of course you want every, you want every part. And this was a great part, but for that very reason, I didn't think I was going to get it. And then for me too, I would hear, cause you could, you sit in an audition room and you can hear what other people are doing in the room. And, and I yeah. would sit there and be like, wow, they are going in such a different direction than me. Like, this is never going to be mine, you know? Um, but I, I do remember booking the part and I just broke down in tears because, you know, I think every actor, um, if you're lucky, you've never had this moment, but the reality for every actor is that there are ups and downs and peaks and valleys. And, and I was definitely in a valley when I booked this part. So it was, <laughs> get it. Um, Caroline, I'm going to talk, talk to you for a bit, because I think, I feel like uh, with this show, I mean, you're not only making like any other TV show, it's like Batwoman is part of the DC universe. These, a, lot, a lot of the characters that you're working with, you're sort of borrowing from DC Comics for this show. I'm curious for you, what is it like sort of as a writer to sort of work within that system, um, having to like coordinate and collaborate with DC Comics in a, uh, on top of the studio and network and finding a way to put your own stamp on these characters that you'll have to sort of put back in the toy box whenever Batwoman ends, you know? Yeah, it's been wonderful working with DC. They don't have strict rules on what you do with the characters they allow you to use. So every season they give us a deck where they suggest different characters that we can use. And then there's definitely ones that we are not allowed to use. And that's because the filmmakers and in, in the real artists, you know, in the movie industry, they're the ones who are uh, using up all the, the known DC villains and heroes. So um, it's it's wonderful though, having like a little bit of a paradigm to work with so you can have some parameters of how you're writing the characters and you're not starting from scratch. Even somebody like Sophie, who's not really a huge character in the Batwoman mythology, at least there's some like characteristics about her that we can attribute to the character and then you build from there. Um, with Ryan, you know, I think DC was like, oh, you're you're using a new character? Oh, okay, because they threw out some names too that we could use to make as, an, as a new Batwoman. But ultimately I was like, yeah, I just want to just go start fresh and not try to like jimmy a, an existing DC character into this role. And so while it's been hugely rewarding to kind of create a character from scratch with Javicia, it's really hard too, because you don't have that nemesis in place. You know, you don't have that backstory that that's already written for you. So it's been um, a bit of a challenge, but now kind of seeing, coming out the other side and seeing how successful the character is, it's, it was so worth it. Mm -hmm. um, and Javisi, actually wonder that's, that, that leads from pretty easily into questions I was gonna ask you, because again, as Carolyn pointed out, this is a completely new character. There is no sort of comic book lore to sort of drawn. What has it been like for you um, um, as the actress? I guess, I guess, do you find yourself wishing that you had like, the comic books to sort of look to for guidance sometimes, or are you having fun sort of creating this really from scratch on your end? I definitely feel like it's been more fun creating it from, creating Ryan from scratch um, with the ingredients that the writers give me because there's no comparison. There's no, you know, when you're watching it, but is she like the Ryan on in the movies or is she like the Ryan in the comics? It's like, this is the, we are now laying the foundation of this character that will forever be here. It's, she's now in the comic book. So she will forever exist in the DC world. And this show is laying out what her, what, who she is, who, you know, who, what her energy is, what her background is, um, and what her history will be with the, with the Cape and cow. So um, it's, it's fun. It's, 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 it's fun to create, it's fun to have like teammates to bounce energy off of in the scenes. I think that Ryan is created based off of her dynamics that she has with the other characters. Mm -hmm. um, and it has allowed me to really like, like fully um, immerse myself in her life because of how I am affected by our Ryan. My Ryan life is affected by Mary and, and what Mary's been through and Luke and what he's been through with his father. And that's having that connect. Oh, I don't know when this is airing, but <laughs> us having that connection. And then even like Alice and having like, you know, Mary, I mean, um, Ryan's 
perspective of Alice knowing more about Alice, you know? Um, and, and with Sophie, which was so interesting because this was when, we, when Megan and I did our first scene together, one of the biggest things in the room was we're two black women having this scene. How are we gonna address this without feeling like all the sisters watching it might, might feel like, come on y'all, you know, like not feeling represented, feeling like why do the only two black women have to not like each other, you know? And we found this way to create this like energy where it's like, even if they don't like each other, you're really rooting for both of them because you know that they really believe in where they're coming from. And it's not like they hate each other. They just both really, really believe in in, in their perspective. So all of that is what creates Ryan in this, in this world and in this universe. And I think that's so much fun. Mm -hmm. And uh, Megan, actually, I wanted to ask you, because I think um, season two of the show is sort of returning in the wake of the Black Lives Matter protests and renewed discussions about police brutality and over policing. For you, what is it like to sort of play a character like Sophie, who is essentially a cop, just with more money, basically, <laughs> or, or better gadgets? Like, what is it like playing that character now in light of everything that's happened? Yeah, I mean, gosh, yeah, especially with everything that's happened. Mind you, you know, June, what happened in June is not the first of it all, right? Like this has unfortunately yeah. been a thing, you know, a systemic issue for a long time. But June obviously was a very, uh, it was a huge highlight on what's been going on um, with our police system. And so me being a part of that and actually representing that on the show, obviously it's like, you know, all eyes on Sophie. And so, you know, whereas like, I think it's actually great that we're able to, you know, expose the uh, the the unfortunate you know cracks in the system you know it's it's great that we're putting that a part of the show I I'm always going to stand on the side of like I, I do want to be the change that we want to see and so I feel like just as much as it's like it's great that we're exposing it um, I hope that there will be an opportunity you know whether it's this show on an, or on another show where we can show the opposite of it um, because being in the role it's actually it's no pressure at all it's it's been fine it's been great but. Uh, but I don't know. I just I think part of me just wants to see like the fantasy of what we all want to see too. So it's a little bit of both. Um, and I know that uh, ahead of this panel, there the audience got a chance to watch episode three of the season. Um, and I know from talking to Nicole that there's a moment in this episode where you made uh, Javisi a break. Um, can you guys talk about that scene and what happened? You know what I will say. I just our on and off vibe. Uh, me. Cameras and Javisa are often working together. And, you know, Javisa works a lot. She's working hard. And every day is a new day. Even if we're in the back cave, you know, it's a new episode, new set of facts are going on. And I think it's really, really important for all of us to keep each other's energy up. And I like, love making Javisia laugh. It's pretty easy. Um, <laughs> and and my favorite part is when I can bring in our real chemistry that we have in life and that she trusts me enough uh, to surprise her, you know, to do something is, so that she can have the ball and volley it back in her own great way because she loves acting and that's so, so clear. And so there's a phone call uh, that we get that we were really, really playing with. And it was me and her in the clinic. And I remember I was just like, okay, what's next? What else? And I remember uh, saying something and Javicia breaking and then being like, okay, now you're doing too much. And I was like, okay, I'm going back. <laughs> um, and I just, I just love that. Like, I love really pushing her because I know she, like Ryan has a great sense of humor. And so, it's just been really fun as a comedic character, you know, to have somebody to volley with. So that's a moment I definitely cherish. Um, and, and so that's how I remember it. What's interesting is like when I watch, you know, Batman and, and like any Gotham shows, we don't get a chance to see the title character have comedic, you know, have comedy. Like the world of Batman, he's a very like, you know, straightforward, straight like type of guy. And so when I saw the audition and um, I don't know if it, if it had that much comedy, it's just how I read it, you know, um, Caroline can speak for if it did or didn't, but like, I just felt like she was this girl that was just like, she just like, <laughs> that's why Luke can't stand her because she just doesn't, she doesn't get it. She just, she looks at everything like, 
You know, and she had such a dark history that now I'm like, yeah, I, she finds comedy in things. And so when I get to do scenes with Mary, especially Mary and Luke, it's like these moments of like these jokes, because Luke's character has a lot of jokes as well. There's these moments where these jokes happen and I just can't, I can't get it together and we'll spend like minutes trying to stop laughing and getting back to the character. And it's just so much fun. And then even outside of the comedy, like when I, whenever the three of us come together and we do our scenes, we, and Cameron and I talked about this later on that day, not the same day that Mary, that, that Nicole was speaking about, but just last week, we, he came mm -hmm. into my training had a very long conversation about, you know, this is our history, not just our history in the world of DC, but our history as actors. Every time we come on screen, like we are leaving our footprint, you know, in, in our in our craft, in our artistry. And I believe like we all hold each other accountable. You know, when we're doing these scenes, like the three of us had to do a very dramatic scene. They both asked the director, is it okay if we improv a bit for Javicia just to see what else can come up? And they did it and it was so, empowering and it made me feel like it was just so much fun and the same with when Megan and I we did a scene last week where it was like we were just there for each other you know and then even it's so funny because Alice and I and Rachel and I don't get to get that many scenes together but we did a scene where that was the same exact situation we were in the midst of a stunt and I'm tired Rachel's tired we have been at this all night and like the director gave a note and I'm like, if I'm this exhausted, I can't even imagine how exhausted Brian is. And Rachel's like, yeah, man. Like, I completely agree with her. And it's just like, we're there for each other. And we, we are constantly making sure that we bring out the best in each other's talent. And it feels good. It really does. And yeah, and I will say just to speak on, this came up for me because I thought when Megan was speaking that she was making such a beautiful point too, to being the change that you wish to see. I would trust no one more at the helm of Sophie and in this role. Like that's why we're so lucky getting to be in Gotham and in this sort of comic book series and getting to play out scenarios that park into real life and are what we want to see in TV. And so I, for one, just feel really lucky to have Megan be in that position of power in and and watch her battle with her occupation and her identity. I just think it makes it so much more interesting. So I just I don't know. I just wanted to add that to your awesome. Your um, well, <laughs> uh, that's all the time we have for our conversation. Um, thank you all for joining us for this, um, and thank you all at home for watching. Um, and please make sure you tune in to Batwoman Sundays at eight p.m. on the CW, and have fun at the rest for the rest of SCAD ATV Fest. Thanks, man. Yay.